As previously noted, tables serve not only as structural elements within a markdown document, but also as datasets. In essence, there's minimal distinction between a diagram and a collection of values. The same values can be collected within a list. By clicking on the small icon above this list, you will obtain the same plot as depicted previously. One of the most significant challenges in science is the scarcity of primary data. Initiatives like the Open Science Framework, http colon slash slash osf.io, aim to address this issue by providing a platform where scientists can store and document extensive datasets. However, Rather than relying on external tools to create visualizations, why not directly incorporate and visualize the data? This would enable others to utilize and examine the data more readily. Everyone who creates or utilizes data and incorporates it into Markdown is already engaging in some form of configuration. Leveraging the structural settings of tables or data, we can automatically visualize data. It's rather surprising that markdown tables have not been treated as datasets before. The following sections aim to provide a brief overview of various visualization options and how the system determines which one to apply. Additionally, you have the flexibility to enforce your preferred visualization style. The following dataset, sourced from https colon slash slash ourworldanddata.org, illustrates government expenditure on education as a percentage of GDP. The first column represents the X values, while the subsequent columns denote different categories. If you click on the image icon again, you'll encounter a more elaborate representation complete with a title and labels. The rationale behind this functionality is that you can incorporate additional settings, similar to how different markdown elements are styled, by simply attaching an HTML comment to the beginning of the table. The type of representation is still automatically determined based on the table structure. However, you can still add attributes like data title, data x label, and data y label to adjust the graphical representation. Refer to the section attributes for more detailed information. Certainly, you can visualize any type of table that doesn't adhere to the classification of a line or scatter plot. Let's define another type of presentation, such as a bar chart. If not all values within the first column can be parsed as numbers, they are interpreted as categories. Additionally, if you change the order of the table, the order of categories in the visualization will also change accordingly. If your table resembles that of a line plot, but the first column contains numbers that appear twice or more times, then this data cannot be interpreted as a function in a mathematical sense. In this case, the data is simply visualized as a scatter plot, displaying only the dots without connecting lines. If you have a dataset presented in a scatter plot like format but wish to utilize this data as primary data for a box plot, you can manually change the type of visualization to a box plot. This can be achieved by adding the following attribute to the beginning of your table, as demonstrated in the snippet below. Each column is then treated as a dataset and visualized accordingly. In contrast to a line or scatter plot, if the first column contains at least one entry that cannot be parsed as a number, it might be represented as a bar chart. This concept works well with the following example. If the maximum values of the columns do not differ too much, then the dataset is represented as a bar chart. However, if the maximum values vary significantly, you might end up seeing only one huge bar, making the other bars indistinguishable from each other. In such cases, alternative visualizations are chosen. If, for example, humans and sheep are removed from the dataset, then weight in kilograms would not be visible in a bar chart at all. In such a case, a radar chart is selected. This type of visualization allows for the analysis of data visually with different y axes, accommodating for the diverse nature of the dataset. 
If you have a table with only one row filled with numbers, it will be automatically presented as a pie chart. In this representation, the header represents the categories, while the body denotes the quantities associated with each category. You can utilize the first column to provide additional information about your data. If the first element of the list body contains text that cannot be directly interpreted as a number, then these two text snippets are used to define the main title and the subtitle of your chart. The default behavior for the table below would be to represent it as a bar chart. However, you can enforce the usage of pie charts simply by adding the attribute pcart into the HTML comment directly above the table. This instruction overrides the default behavior and ensures that the data is visualized as a pcart. The result looks as follows. Since data is parsed at runtime, you can also incorporate animations to dynamically change the values of the chart as you progress through your slides or navigate backward. However, it's important to consider that this approach may not be suitable for all audiences, especially those who prefer a more traditional textbook-style presentation. If the previous table was too long and you prefer to condense it into two columns and grow your data vertically, you can use the attribute data transpose, which mirrors your data along an imaginary vertical axis. This allows you to present your data in a more compact format. The result remains the same as above, but organizing your data in this transposed format might make it easier to handle and interpret. The result The funnel is a similar representation to the pie chart, but it is not selected automatically. If you wish to use the funnel visualization, you'll need to set the data type parameter to funnel. The process for using effects to generate animated diagrams remains the same as for pie charts. A map visualization is akin to a bar chart in terms of the table structure. However, if you intend to depict your data on an actual map, you'll need to include a GeoJS on file containing all relevant geographic information about the shapes of your countries, states, cities, etc. The first column of your table must match the names of the objects in your GeoJS on data, which is attached to your table as follows. Another type of visualization is a heat map, which is utilized when the table header and the first column exclusively contain numerical values, essentially representing coordinates. However, if you prefer to use categories instead of numerical coordinates, you can enforce the usage of a heat map by adding the following comment. The attribute data show simply displays the diagram by default, rather than using the table as the primary representation. A parallel representation is employed when there are simply too many categories, making a bar chart impractical due to the resulting thin lines.
If the values in the first column and the header of the table are equal, then the interpreter attempts to interpret the content of the table as an adjacency matrix, which defines a graph. If these values are symmetrical across the diagonal, then the matrix defines an undirected graph. In contrast to this, if those values differ, then the result is simply a directed graph, where the values define the strength of the connections between nodes. A Sankey diagram is a special type of directed graph that is used to visualize the flow of something, such as energy, money, or other resources, typically represented as streams or flows between nodes. Simply set data type equals none to prevent any kind of visualization for the corresponding table. You can use the attribute data type to overwrite the automatically identified representation with your desired one. The names can be taken from the presented list, and it is not relevant whether you use lower or upper case. This approach also enables the use of types that cannot be automatically inferred at the moment, such as Sankey or box plot. If you do not want to show tables as diagrams, you can also use none, and only the table will be visible. Simply add this attribute or set it to true, if you want to visualize your data immediately, without the need to click on the switch button. However, users still retain the ability to switch to the table representation if desired. Similar to the mathematical sense, set this attribute or set it to true if you want to transpose rows and columns. One benefit is that you can, for example, use a pie chart and let your table grow vertically instead of using a horizontal layout. By default, the first cell defines the title of your diagram. However, if you prefer larger titles and want to avoid writing gigantic table headers, you can apply this attribute. Similarly, as described above, you can also define the strings for the labels, in this case, for the label for the x-axis. Or, in this case label for the y-axis. Currently, this attribute is used to refer to your GeoJS on data if you use the map representation. However, this functionality might change in the future to allow for the loading and visualization of data directly, such as CSV files. See sections fun with tables, map. Be careful when utilizing GeoJS on files from external websites, as this may result in coarse, cross-origin resource sharing, problems. It's better to store these files in your own projects and refer to them directly to avoid such issues. Leah script utilizes eCharts for the diagrams and therefore uses a custom HTML tag or web component called LIAChart. You can check out examples at the following site. Using this tag, you can pass your diagram configuration directly as an option in JSON format or as a simple dictionary, which will be evaluated automatically. This approach allows you to rebuild nearly every example directly, providing flexibility and ease of customization. If you require the execution of JavaScript or need more interaction with the diagram, you can also apply script tags. For more information on this, refer to section JavaScript or JS components.